And when I say, so, you've heard about the importance of salah tons of times. So I'm not going to repeat what you've already heard hundreds of times. But I will tie it to what I'm trying to say here. When you have a healthy relationship with the Qur'an, you know how even the most highest professions like physicians or architects or whatever, even they have to go for refresher seminars and reviews, right? You're, you've internalized this really deep, profound thing. Where do you get your review? Salat. Every few hours you stand in front of Allah and you review what message He's given you, the profound words that He's given you and me. So it's an opportunity for us to refresh our faith constantly. It, it revives us spiritually and intellectually every single time, if we are able to engage in our salat. But if our salat is what it is right now, which is pretty much very good cardiovascular exercise, right? And it's not much more than that. For most of us, we don't know what's being recited. We don't know what Allah Azza wa is saying in the Qur'an. Now this is a tragedy. Because the means by which you can keep Qur'an alive in the community, Allah gave us that mechanism. That institution is salah. When the salah, becomes, when the salah is not connecting you to Qur'an, nothing can connect you to the Qur'an. The, the salah is what Allah gave us to connect to the Qur'an. That's what Allah gave us. What can we have in addition that's going to work? So we have the halaqat and the tafasir and things like that, but there needs to be a mass movement of facilitating Arabic education, for Muslims across the world, and I'm just saying specifically here in the United States, we should have access to the best form of Arabic education for the purpose of us having a better sound experience in Salat. This has to do with us surviving. Because when our Salah becomes empty, then the entire deen is gone. Because you know Salah is directly connected to three things. I'll make quick mention of this. The first thing is the, 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 the state of the Ummah, the state of the union, right? The state of the union, Allah, Allah's Messenger وسلم, says about the salah, He says, In saluhat, saluhat amru kulluhu. If, this, if the salat is good, then the whole thing is good. If salat is good, the whole thing is good. You know, it's an amazing thing to say. It's not just about making wudu properly and facing the right direction. And those are all important peripherals. But what's the heart of the salah? To connect to the word of Allah. To have this deep relationship. With, and if that's there, then the ummah is okay. Then they're connected to what they need to be connected to. You know, their, their halaqah of Qur'an is when they stand in front of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an amazing thing. So that's the first thing. It fixes the problem of the ummah. The second thing about salah I want to mention, is you know how I said the fundamental problem of, uh, of, of the ummah is iman? Did I say that? Right? You know in the Qur'an, Allah uses, when, when the qibla changed, well, when the qibla changed, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ you know, the Jews came to the Muslims and they said, you've been praying in the wrong, you had the wrong GPS address all these years, your salat didn't count. Because the Qibla is this one and you've been praying towards Aqsa. You know, they said all those years got wasted, huh? And Allah says, no, Allah will not waste. He didn't say Allah will not waste your prayers. Allah says, Allah is not one to waste your Iman. In other words, in the ayah, what Iman means is Salat. To Allah Azza wa Jal, Salat and Iman are the same thing. So if Salat is good, Necessarily, what does that mean? Iman is good. As far as Allah is concerned, if salat is good, iman is good. So that's the second thing. The third and final thing I want to tell you about this fundamental, which is salat, that as an institution that we need to protect and, and, and savor, is that Allah Azza wa Jal calls the entire Qur'an dhikr. Multiple times. In huwa illa dhikrun, you know, wa Qur'anun mubin, kalla innaha tadhkirah, wa dhakkir bil Qur'an, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, over and over again, Allah mentions that the Qur'an is reminder. But what does He say about Salat? He says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Establish Salat so you can remember me. So the Qur'an is remembrance and Salat, Allah also calls that remembrance. In other words, the real way to remember Allah through the Qur'an is the Salat. So Salat is our second fundamental. We have to fix it. We have to understand what's being said. And I, we have to, I, I can't just say this philosophically to you, I have to mention some practical things too. Here's the one practical step for instance. So the Imam reads Surah Al-Adiyat in Maghrib. Right? Even if he doesn't read the, the whole, one little bit of Adiyat in first rakah, a little bit in second rakah. It's a short Salat. At the, immediately at the end of Salat, you know what we recited today? We recited these Ayat. And just a couple of things about those Ayat. If, we, if we're not at the level of understanding Arabic yet, at least get something out of that Salat. <laughs> What did, what did Allah say to us in this salah? What did Allah say to us in this surah? Something from it, even if a little bit, to give Muslims a taste of what they're missing. If we just had a taste of what we're missing, l being motivated to learn this book and to educate ourselves and our families about this book would become easy. 
Because if you just have a taste of this treasure, you become addicted, it's very easy. You don't have to force someone to want to learn the Qur'an if you've really been able to give them a taste of it. Then the rest of it they can do on their own.